All right, so here we go. Got an engine hoist. We got a boat trailer. Now, what are we gonna do with that boat trailer? We're about to pull this thing out. I'll just give you a little idea of the workspace here. It's kind of tight. Here we go. We're about to pull it out. It's got the rolling cradle. We're gonna pull it out, bring it over there, and we're gonna try and flip it over. Almost exactly like we did before. Um, got my little four-wheeler right here. It's got the winch on it. We're gonna use that to pull it over. Then we're gonna use the uh, engine hoist to catch it. So that's what we got going on here. So we just gotta go this little bitty space right here. We're gonna try and flip it over right there like before. I'm already kind of giving you a glimpse of what's to come, but at least we'll go through the process and maybe I can talk through it. Yeah, as we pull this thing out in the sun, you can really see it. The paint job on the bottom looks really good. I mean, it's about a 95 out of 100. Like I said, there's a few little things I'd like to fix, but other than that, it's pretty good, except you know, right here, I bang it up against the gate and put a little nick in it. But So using the same concept that we used before, you saw that before. We use this, use this engine hoist to kind of help pick it up and whatever, and then I just use the winch on my four-wheeler to give me the leverage to kind of roll it up on its edge and then I just kind of control uh, control the fall there by catching it with that winch. Um, so I'm gonna kind of go through what ha what went right and what went wrong. So I didn't have any tires or anything like that. So I know I'm gonna need some of this foam board and this is one inch thick foam board. So I was able to get two sheets of that and I actually have another sheet of half inch that I wind up using as well. And so that's just to be able to keep it up off the concrete um, and so that it rolls over and, you know, it doesn't get scratched up. You know, no point. The last time I did this, it was all very controlled, very slow moving, almost boring. Um, this is not that case. Um, I put a lot of thought in this like I, like I feel like I have everything, but it just didn't go according to plan. So here it is. All I'm trying to do is I'm using my little hydraulic jack there. I got the... the engine hoist holding the front up and the hydraulic jack I'm putting some jack stands in the back it's because I want I'm trying to get that rolling cradle out from underneath it so we can set it on the ground so you know another thing that kind of factored into this day is the angst is uh, you know I started this about 11 o'clock in the morning and my daughter has a soccer game this evening so I have to leave the house by two o'clock to be able to get there in time so I've got you know roughly three hours to get this done uh, and you know last time it didn't take near that long so there you can see I've got it jacked up I got the rolling cradles out kind of sped forward a little bit all I did was put some clamps right there where those transverse bulkheads are and I'm basically clamping that rope and all in there or, or the rope is hooked to the clamps and then I put a little piece of scrap plywood on the outside when I tighten down those clamps just to try and keep from putting any dimples or anything in there so now, you know, it's a slow, methodical process. You know, I thought about this as I was going, that little hydraulic jack. That's a hydraulic jack my mom gave me for my birthday, I bet you 20 years ago. Um, and I still use that thing all the time. It's a little, I don't, you know, a little cheap Napa brand or something like that. It's just weird that made me, you know, reminded me of that. So if you're looking for any gift ideas for young men, you know, a little hydraulic jack like that works. So... Here I'm just trying to block it up uh, and you see I have a couple blocks on this side. That's just to kind of get it over the edge so that I don't scrape up that edge too much and the clamps kind of stick down a little bit. So now I've moved the jack around to the front so that I, I, can, lay, you know, I can let it down nice and easy. And uh, now I'm going to just back the truck up and I'm, as we go I'm going to try and explain kind of what my methodology was. So here, these ropes, they go up underneath the boat and they hook to those clamps that we just saw on the other side. So basically what happens is as that four-wheeler pulls on the line going over, that's just to keep the boat from sliding basically away from my truck. So there's a lot of looking and a lot of thinking that goes into this and I cut, I cut, I don't know, hours out of this. So those two ropes there will be what I'll actually hook up to and use the four-wheeler winch to, to winch it over. Now I'm just trying to kind of get lined up on it. And uh, last time, because I had that those cradle attachments and all, this went really, really smooth. And I didn't put those on there because it went as smooth as it did. I felt like maybe I overdid it, but looking back, I wish I would have done those again. 
because it gave me the vertical leverage and it gave me the kind of the steps that, that this thing would go over. So now you can get an idea. You can see the, those clamps I have where these ropes are here. And once again, that's just, uh, I put those little pieces of plywood in there. So now kind of get tight on it and you know, for whatever reason, it's just, you know, it's not wanting to roll and the four wheelers, it's actually pulling the four wheeler. So, you know, it shouldn't take that much pressure or that much pull to get this thing to roll over. So all I'm lacking is some vertical uh, height to help it get started. So that's what you see. I just basically hooked the winch cable into the hook. And so my plan is to just kind of get it rolling up and then I'll kind of reassess the situation and, and, and get it back where it needs to be. So, you know, once again, looking, looking. And now it's starting to move, starting to move. And here we go. Let's find, here it comes. But for, for whatever reason, those straps, those black straps you see hanging off that engine hoist, the way that I have them hanging, they're not in the right place. Um, they actually need to be closer on the on the what would be the port side, which is the the part that's on the bottom right now. They need to be on that side. You'll see me move those later. But okay, so now I'm getting a feel. I can roll it up. I can set it down. I feel everything's under control, right? It's all slow. It's all you know. I, this thing is running fast, and I'll slow it down when we get to the kind of the critical point. But I'm kind of running through this about four speed. And uh, so I've loosened those black straps. You now you can see right now they're hooked on the part that's up high. So I finally get it up here kind of high enough, but when I get off the four wheeler, it's dragging it. So I need to go a little bit more just to get that pressure and whatever move it just made right there kind of got me where it'll hold itself or it's it's uh, it's not pulling the foil anymore so I'm able to just hold it there now it's I'm still very leery of it you can see some of the stuff I'm doing I'm kind of uh, I feel how tight something is and then move around and and you know right here is, is, is especially a case I'm, I realize I got those straps in the wrong place and I need to move them um, but it's uh, it's not going too well there you can kind of see that keel pad how it's a little cattywampus i've talked about it a lot you know that all started from me trying to to fare the bottom um prior to putting it in fiberglass and i kind of kind of just you know and all that goes back to how i originally stitched it up so that was a mistake that was made in like step number three if we're on you know step 50. Um, so here you can see, you know, if I, as I let it go, it's it's a, and it's windy as it can be. You can see the trees. So as I let it go, it wants to tumble. So now I've got it there, and I really can't. I don't feel comfortable letting it go. And I'm evaluating. And I was able to, to kind of scooch over there and grab this other strap, which is, you know, you'll kind of see my process. My original intent was to bring the four wheeler around on this side, where I could use the winch to kind of let it down, but because of the way that engine hoist and all that is, my foil is trapped. I can't get it out the gate now. So I'm thinking that I'm just going to uh, ease this thing over. If, if you know, if you go back and look at the first time I rolled it over, it really landed on those straps with that cradle and all. Very uneventful, very boring. Like I was able to kind of do it by hand. And right now I'm just trying to make sure that I stay in a safe position where I've always got back pressure. Like that green strap you can see there, that's preventing it from rolling over. Um, the ropes on the on the ground there are keeping the bottom from sliding out, sliding out from underneath and it fall, you know fall on its face. And look, this is this is not a one man job. And you know I I kind of got a little stubborn here and said you know I'm going to do it by myself when I really. You know, with with one extra set of hands would have really been a huge thing, a huge asset. So, you know, like I told you, I've got that green strap and it's holding it. And so now I'm just going to try and I'm trying to re kind of reposition things here a little bit. And remember, I just put that strap on there, so the boat was kind of teetering there, okay. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's a little. Uh, little foreshadowing, a little, little, little idea of what's to come. Um, that green strap has to stay connected to that to my truck there or this thing is it's going. Um, and so here it is, I'm in a position, I'm by myself. Um, I can't let go of either end. I can't 
move so you know finally i was able to get these two straps hooked together and i get them winched back together and, and everything you know kind of resituates and resettles So you can see I've got the, the the green one hooked to the boat and now I've got this black cord, this black strap, ratchet strap that's connected to my truck and I've, I've got them both tight and so now you can see everything's tight and I kind of wiggle everything and everything's setting okay, everything's good and uh, you know here's another shot at the bottom and now I'm just trying to figure out okay how do I, how do I get this thing moving a little bit more and control it. What I really needed you know like I said if, if I'd have just hooked that strap to my truck like I had it and I had somebody in my truck and let them just slowly back up it would have been fine even maybe I could have done that uh, that would have that may have been smarter but in the moment you know as I talked about um you know I'm out here I'm running against the clock it's a bad situation because I'm you know I, I've got to be I've got to be leaving at two o'clock and you know you can't really start a project like this with that kind of hard of a time frame and not to mention, I got the whole driveway and everything all fouilleed up, you know, where nothing can move and nothing can happen. So I'm under, I'm putting some pressure on myself to, you know, to get this done before I leave. And not to mention, you can see it's sunny. There's not a cloud in the sky. It's hot. Uh, you know, it's hot out here in the sun. And uh, I just can't, I can't stop. And I'm so close, you know, all I need to do is, all I need is for that thing to just kind of roll over a little bit. So right now I've recognized that my, my task is I've got to control how this thing rolls over. So I, my thoughts were as I was able to kind of wiggle that strap is if I use two straps and I, and I loosen one while the other one was tight, just a little bit looser, and then, I, you know, and then I just alternated back and forth, I could kind of step it down. And you'll see that's kind of what I'm doing. So we, we've kind of gone real speed here. So you can you know this is this is when the action's going to happen but i'm getting myself situated here so that i like i said you see there's there's a little bit of strap a little bit of slack in that one you know see i it's still real real close to being perfectly balanced so it's not a stressful situation yet and you know i had already thought about just backing my truck up and letting it roll like that um as an idea but i kind of just didn't get there so I'm trying to be very cautious. You can see, you know, I let it move a little bit, and then I, you know, ratchet those things up because you, I mean, everybody knows if you don't ratchet, you know, if you if you pull the pull the strap out of that ratchet and you don't give it a couple good wraps on that little wheel, then that thing with that strap and all just slide right off. So here it is. I'm, you know, I know that I'm close to rolling it over, and you can see those two black straps there. When the boat rolls over, that should, you know, they should just calmly land right in those straps. And then we let that engine hoist down and everything goes nice and chill. So uh, here all I'm trying to do is I, I disconnected the, that strap to the, to the bottom of my truck, keeping the bottom of the boat because I don't want it to slide or switch. I don't want it to, uh, I want to try and control every dimension that I can here. I don't want that thing sliding away from my truck. So, you know, once again, like I talked about, you could see. I let some slack out in one strap, and then I come back here and, you know, try and let the slack out the other. And I'm able to just kind of hold it with my hand. I mean, it's not like everything's under a lot of pressure right now. By and large, the boat's not all that heavy. It's just awkward, right? You know, if there were probably three people there, we could grab this side and maybe just lay it down. But, uh, you know, once again, I'm a little bit stubborn, and I'm only doing that. So also, uh, what I talked about there is that I would hooked my winch from my four-wheeler onto that engine hoist so that, that, you know, at no time would that hoist run up underneath the boat and the boat land on the hoist or something like that. Because I did already have one incident when I was trying to pick it up that I, one of the legs of that engine hoist kind of run up into the bottom of the boat and gave me a little nick. So fortunately, I think it's something on the side or whatever that I can fix um, at this point. So, you know, here I just, same process. Once again, just break it, put a little bit of slack in it, 
you know, re retighten it as you're supposed to. And there it goes. And just like that, that's how it happened. But fortunately, you can see my straps were there. Everything was situated. This is what it looked like from the other side. You know, it doesn't look, you know, there's a lot more momentum, a lot more movement than I wanted. You can see right here with that black strap. Once it went under pressure, it wasn't, it wasn't ratcheted up enough and have enough wraps on that spool. And it just pulled right out of that ratchet strap. But I was very lucky that I had had these straps as tight as I did. And you can see really nothing moves. And the fact that I had that four wheeler winch on that, you see I'm shaking my head. I know I just avoided a catastrophe. So sorry for the tease, everybody. You know, you see it falling and all this other stuff. But ultimately, yeah, it's it's okay. Um, I couldn't detect a scratch, a nick, uh, anything. I mean, the way the straps are, everything still looks good. So now the process is pretty much straightforward. We're gonna just ease it down to the ground, and that you know the foam board did great because all I needed was something just to keep it from from. Uh, and that's a high density. I mean, that's you know that stuff didn't hardly crease just the boat setting on it and whatnot so you can see how the boat looks like it's sitting on the legs of that engine hoist that's what i really had to worry about um and now i just basically disconnected everything i kind of ran i kind of skipped over all that pulling everything off of it i hooked to the front of the boat i got the trailer already kind of sitting in front of it i gotta realign it here a little bit and uh like that you know, i just kind of moved it so i can line the trailer up straight to it and you know, I'm just trying to make sure that this, you can't hardly tell, but that board underneath the transom is keeping it off the concrete. So I know that as I pick it up, I got to make sure it doesn't fall off and you'll see me, I'll, I'll move that board a little while. But basically just, you know, oh my God, this was the slowest jack in the world. You know, this thing, just look at it. I mean, you had to pump and pump and pump and pump and pump and it just, it took forever. Um, but you know, all in all, I was able to flip this thing over you know for like sixty dollars uh so i can't can't complain too much you know I, I would have liked to have had a little mini x or something like that so i could control the roll a little better from height um but you know i hope i never have to roll this thing again that was the last time i've done it I, you know i did it right and i did it wrong so i'm i'm okay batting 500 that'll get me in the hall of fame Yeah, fortunately that was just, a, I put a little furniture dolly up underneath there and it, it had cracked that furniture dolly. So I had thought for sure that I had set, I had just punched a hole through the bottom or whatever the way my day is going. Um, so now I just kind of pushing that, pushing that little dolly back up in there, setting the boat on the foam boards. I'm just trying to get the front up and you know, almost just kind of get the stern up. I kind of know what's going to happen as I start rolling that trailer underneath there. The boat's going to just kind of go right up on it. The, you know the way it goes one thing that i kind of mistaken is i forgot that i had already drilled i already had those uh, the the bow eye eyes uh, already drilled and i could have used that to pick up the front every time i did it but for some reason i didn't look i didn't look up underneath the boat uh, or i didn't look and but i eventually do wind up you know putting the bow eye in which i think i do it right here i kind of kind of trying to move the trailer over a little bit and i kind of get it situated look at it yep yep then we're gonna pull it out of the way uh once again the trailer's got new tires new wheels new springs new hubs new strap new jack new lights so the trailer should be set hopefully for a while so we just put in this eye bolt in here we're gonna uh hook the strap up to it you know pardon the mess i got stuff strewed everywhere just because you know this this is an unusual event right uh, not many people you know in your neighborhood have flipped a boat over in their driveway. Uh, those that you, those that have, you're lucky guys. So, yeah, once again, here I just kind of jack it up, start winching, you know, winch the trailer right back up to it, and I get to the point where I have to pull out that engine hoist because the tires and all, it just, you know, starts getting in the way. But by this time, I feel like I've got a good hold on it, on the boat, and you can see how I was talking about the trailer's going to come up there and kind of line itself up, and yeah. It's 1.30 and I've got to be leaving the house by 2 o'clock. So 
I'm starting to stress for sure, but I, you know the stressful part by and large is over. Now it's just I'm worried. Okay, as I as I'm winching this thing up on there, is it scratching the? Is that new carpet scratching the bottom of the boat? And you know, luckily, you know the boat had had about three weeks of cure, and I really hadn't been able to do anything to it in three weeks with other stuff going on. But so that paint was hard, and uh, you know I didn't see any scratches from the carpet. And now it's just time to maneuver things around. You know, pull my truck up, get it out of the way, and I you'll see me here. I use my little four wheel. I, I do this all the time. It's got a winch on the front, and uh, I'll hook it in, hook it on the front of my trailers, and you know, especially these little light trailers like my little utility trailer, and you can move it around, you move it around pretty easy with that. So, but I can tell you this: like those white pipes, they had to come off the trailer and all to be able to get it into the tent. Uh, and now with that trailer with those tires and all, it is it's taking up all the tent. So I'll get to that, maybe show that here, uh, maybe the next go around uh, whenever we get started. You know, so there we go. And got it on the trailer. I'm gonna put it, put it back up in the tent. But I did take a couple of pictures before I did it, as I backed it up in the yard. You can see everything looks pretty good. Now we're gonna go to back to work on the top side.